Episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Part Two. Joining me today is. Oh, fun! <laughs> this is funny. You cut out right at the, right at the beginning of that. Oh no! That's what's the scariest thing. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're here for another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. Not this is Ghoulie Gentlemen. <laughs> we're we're we, we screwed up. We missed the first week. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, and to start off this month of horror movie reviews, Alfie picked something for us. What did you pick, sir? I picked a movie called Possession from 1981. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I gotta ask. One, how did you hear about this movie? And two, had you ever watched it before? So, I had only heard of it because I was watching a YouTube video for, from a YouTuber called Super Eye Patch Wolf, who does like um, lists of like the, the horror movies that he really liked or like underrated horror movies and stuff. And this was on there. And I'd never watched this before he taught for uh, Geeky Jenna. I just thought, oh, okay, so I, I, I've been meaning to get to some of these and this is one of the ones that he talked about. So yeah, why not? Good as he says any kind of thing. So yeah, I had never watched this before doing this outside of just that recommendation from a YouTuber. Okay. I never heard of this before, and it's really funny, because, you know, full disclosure, I watched this essentially on a, a pirating website, um, pirate streaming site, and, like, I, I tend not to do that anymore. I try to find, like, you know, a legal streaming or, like, you know, pay two bucks, watch on YouTube kind of situation anymore. Um, and I, I couldn't this movie cannot be purchased anywhere and like for streaming online uh the only way you can purchase this movie is to get like dvd copies of them and from what i was seeing from people it's like really hard to get a dvd copy that's like a legit copy and not something that someone made in their like their house uh this movie's also been cut to hell uh, for American releases and and such, it's it's had like thirty minutes cut out of it uh, at points. So getting a proper release of the full cut is also almost impossible. So the fact that anyone has ever watched this movie <laughs> is almost impressive. <laughs> there we have it. I didn't know much about that. I'd heard of um, Hubbub around her, that there had been it had been banned in some parts of the UK. Um, why though? Like I, I mean, I watched this and I just didn't understand why this would be banned. Like, is there like background reasons behind it or something? Like, I think some it came of... out at a time in the eighties in the UK where there was like a big surge of fear around censorship in media and fear among like the violence created by home movies and videos and like snuff films and stuff were like really bad i think it just fell mm. into that category because there's nudity in it and there's sex and stuff like that i think i think that was part of it. interesting okay well i will say i mean i i find it interesting that the the thing i find most fascinating about this movie is the controversy surrounding it um because on all honesty i fucking hated this <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hate it. It's definitely not a jumble watch. 
I didn't, uh, like I, I I was I was just kind of I think the to sum it up in a word is, haha, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, um, I had a really hard time watching this. Not in the way like yeah, it's a horror movie. You're supposed to have a hard time. I had a hard time just like with the way it was done. I mean, like first of all, I could not understand a goddamn thing at certain points in this film. Like, literally, the the sound mixing on this film is straight trash. Just, like, you know, I understand that they're on a limited budget and stuff, but, like, legitimately, they're in just... They're shooting in hallways using live audio um, where they're not, like, going in and doing ADR or, or from what I can tell, anything to clean it up because it's just echoey, tinny garbage. Um... There's scenes where characters are just, like, almost whispering, and then the music's, like, overtaking them and stuff, and it's just one of the worst audio mixes I've come across in a, like, professionally released or produced film. And I understand this is, like, pretty low budget and stuff, but still, it is just... I, I expect more from something of this caliber. Um... Because, I mean, shit, man, we've watched fan films with better audio mixing than this um, that look a whole lot worse. Um, so I was just... God, that part was awful. And then just the... The script did no favors for me at all. It was just a... It just felt very much like they didn't really know what they were doing and there's just a lot of stuff that should have been left on the cutting room floor because a lot of it just feels very repetitive like incredibly repetitive like i think you can take out probably a good 20 minutes from this movie uh in just scenes that serve the exact same function you know yeah definitely uh, yeah, so that that was the part that just I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" Because um, the stuff that I do find, you know, legitimately interesting to one extent or another, is just so spaced out that it's like by the time you get it, it's just not worth it. <laughs> um, like you've had to go through so much to get to it, it's just not worth the the payoff. Yeah, it, it, I feel like the the way it's like goes to, and obviously with films like this, I always I'm not sure if this is in the intent, so it even counts as a critique. But even then, I don't necessarily think that means it is inherently good just because it found it it did this. <laughs> um, but like the idea of um, it's like an exhausting watch, like there oh, is, yeah. like with how people are acting in it and. and music and, and how it's shot I have to believe that is deliberately especially with the state of the character of the script it is meant to be like kind of like harrowing in the sense that you're going for this journey and stuff but it doesn't necessarily do that for me it just is an exhausting watch <laughs> like it, <laughs> it just it just it isn't comfortable to watch and sit through but not in a way that makes me think back as like oh that's so artistic it's like no it's just what I said at the first. <laughs> like, there's no... And again, I, I don't... That's what makes it difficult, because it is intentional, and I do think some choices made with it are smart in, in, in achieving that kind of unease effect. Um, I think there are some camera tricks here and some cuts here that do really do a good job of, like, getting that psychological horror for you and making you just feel unease. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of moments with acting in that where that really does pay off. But like you said, those are kind of few and far between, and there's just like a lot of stuff in between it where scenes just go on and on and on, and um, yeah, it, it makes it hard to appreciate it for the merit it, that it does have because it is such a slog at points. Yeah, like there's a scene really early on that like kind of started to like really bother me very quickly. And it was when they, like, go to meet in the restaurant when she's first talking about, like, leaving him. And he's, like, going over divorce options, basically. And they're they're both, like, sitting almost back-to-back -back in front of a mirror. 
and neither of their reflections show up in the mirror because of the the particular angle that's chosen and they don't show up for a very long time in that scene and it's only once when the the main guy like turns his head at one point just kind of briefly and then the back of his head shows up in the reflection so like that was just incredibly unsettling um and and really really cool and so when i saw that like early on in the movie i'm like okay so they know what they're doing behind the camera here so there's i'm I'm betting there's gonna be a lot of stuff like that that's just very unsettling to like look at no there's like i think that was their most genius move they made in the whole thing right out the gate (laughs) as far as just really cool camera shots and and stuff to to make you feel like weirded out um I don't know. Like, this this was just a really hard movie to watch. Because, like, how many times does she go back to the apartment that they live at and interact with him just to have it blow up into some kind of ridiculous screaming match? Every time. Like, it's, it's like... A, every 50 minutes. Yeah, it's like three or four times that they do that. And it's, you could have just gotten away with two. Like, you really didn't need that many, like, just, you know, uncomfortable as fuck scenes to sit through. Because they all serve the same narrative function. Um, I don't know, man. I just don't like this type of movie because the thing it reminds me of is The Witch which I know is a very popular uh, newer horror film now. And I just, I hated that movie in the theater and I I hate this in the same way. And it's just like this Artur uh, horror film like model where the director pretends to be smarter than the audience. I'm like, you know what, man? by, By the end of the fucking movie, I get it. She's fucking an incubus, and it's it's messing with her head and controlling her actions, and she's, you know, literally her soul is fighting her inside her body over it. Like, I just, I fucking got it. it it's not this complicated. It did not need to be this, like, deep, man. <laughs> um... I would have traded all those scenes of her and her husband arguing in the apartment for, like, another ten minutes of tentacle sex, goddammit. Um, Well, I know you would, but let's just talk about your... Look, Ian, this is not the time to pitch your fucking dream project. We're doing an episode right now, okay? (laughs) If I know there was tentacle sex in this, I would have never recommended it to you, because you always get like this. (laughs) (laughs) Just, like... Just fucking me in the in the studio. It's like, I mean, this this is pretty good, but uh, you ever think of putting a tentacle sex scene in here somewhere? This That's is fun. an Avengers movie. I don't know. What you... they were, they were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, like after his fucking conversation about Aquaman, like it was. Uh-huh. I'm gonna fix there again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's just like that. That was like more interesting. Um, not just because, like, ooh, boobies, but, like, it was just... It was more visually and and sustainably interesting to show that moment on on film. And they're like, there's all this build-up to it. But it's not worth the build-up. Because you already know what's happening with her. Before you get that build-up. If, if this is just, like, cut to that randomly at some point in the film and it just went on and on and you just like if you had filmed a uncomfortably long sex scene where everything that that it is doing to her looks disgusting and yet she seems to be in in pure ecstasy the whole time that would be more interesting and and more like disturbing than anything they do with that couple in the apartment. Yeah, and and again, I feel like there's to your point of like these type of films is I very much when I was quickly realized like oh it is one of those, but I'm um 
I'm very kind of like horror naive in terms of what I've watched and what I think. So there are more kind of things to just like. I'm more in situations where like because I haven't experienced it as many kind of those type of films outside of just word of mouth. I do want to be more like, oh, okay, so maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe, maybe, maybe this will be for me, or I don't know, kind of thing. But then, I normally, quickly realizes I, I, I do land more in your camp, where I'm just like, oh, no, because all the tricks in the world hinting about inter interesting stuff and 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 implying interesting stuff. I'm never gonna be as good as just showing or doing interesting stuff. <laughs> like it just it always feels like just shorthand for that kind of thing. And I, I don't necessarily with horror as well, I think it just depends on the person with like what, what makes that shocking to them. But like there's nothing in this that scared me. There's nothing in this that made me feel like oh, I'll have to like look away or, or, or kind of thing. Like, again, even like full on graphic technical sets are just funny. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't mean, maybe that's just because I'm fucked up, but like, there were moments in this, I don't know if you had this, because we have similar sense of humor, where just like, shit got so bad, I just laughed my ass off at like <laughs> how insane this bitch was getting. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> We're in a restaurant. Like, there were just moments in this where people would just get to such sheer lunacy. I think the one where it's like mm -hmm. she's she's like messing with her hands and she's just fucking like freaking out with her hands and then mm -hmm. the guy just sits down he's like oh come sit down let's just talk about this and she's just like <laughs> he's like come sit down yeah, like, and he's just like having this normal ass conversation with her at that it's point. Fucking I don't know if that's meant to be funny or be horrific or be uneasy but it legit just made me laugh my ass off of <laughs> What the fuck? So like, there's that's there's moments like that in that kind of thing. Um, that yet yeah, that I don't think was the intention, and and I don't think think where well, you're right. It just the the actress here, and I, I feel bad because I don't um know her name. Is really like giving a fucking. She's going for it. Everyone in this movie is going for it. They read the script and they were like, all right, we're in this a hundred and twenty percent. No one is like reserved. <laughs> Everyone mm -hmm. is giving a shit to the wall. And there are moments where that works really effectively. But I feel like the problem becomes it's just too much. It's just you can't appreciate scenes like um when she has the miscarriage in in the in, in the subway tunnel. And it just goes for so long that she's just fucking losing her mind covered in blood and milk of the gross who's on around the floor, just everything. It's just like girl screaming you don't know how she's got so much long uh, breath in her lungs to do it I feel like stuffing like that would be much more effective if beforehand she'd just been like almost monotone and that was the first time you saw where oh that's where she broke and then nothing mm -hmm. was the same ever since but she's like that in nearly every scene <laughs> yeah and it's weird because like so's the dude yeah like that's the thing for me is like they're both just insanely insanely irrational to a ludicrous degree um because like you mentioned like when they're in the fucking restaurant in the beginning of the movie and like it starts off as like this argument and then he's like chasing her through the place and she's tipping over chairs and everything and i'm like okay he should just be in jail like, there's no way he would not be... I don't give a fuck what Berlin's uh, fucking government was like in 1981. There's no way no one called the fucking cops on that guy. <laughs> um, he should just be in jail for the rest of the movie. The movie's over, you know? And that... what's really funny about that is that they play it. Like, he goes home. And he's like, oh my god, she's such an irresponsible parent. I won't let you see it. He's like, you're fucking with throwing chairs at <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's just like... And then he's got... She's got, like, the friend that's that's in the cast. And, in, and I'm just looking at it, it's like, okay, you are being invited over to the home and you are seeing how unstable this environment is. You, I don't give a fuck whose friend you are. I don't give a fuck if you hate the dad. As a responsible adult, you should remove that child from that household. 
Same thing for the fucking teacher. Like, the teacher sees, you know, like, she develops this weird relationship with the father, and it's the same actress as the, the wife character, but they just put a wig on her. It's the strange... I don't know what the fuck role she serves in the story, but, like, just just from, like, a practical, realistic stance, you should... No adult should be letting this happen. Because, like, the father is just an unhinged person to begin with, and then somehow the wife is crazier, you know? I don't know, like... like suspension of disbelief just breaks down at a point, you know? And I think you're on it with the friend. To the teacher thing... I guess, like, you're right, it, it's it's weird. What I could gather with how it ends and, and like, how it is the same person thing, I think it's trying to do a thing where, like, she makes the husband she wants and somehow he made the wife he wanted. Because they both end up just, like, fucking double, like, it's the clone saga, yeah, it's just as convoluted as the clone saga. She makes fucking Ben Riley, and he makes Kane, kind of thing. It's like, there's this fucking, I think that's meant to have a supernatural component as well, with her. So I don't, I think the teacher thing is fine, because that's also meant to, like, I don't know if that's a fucking demon or the devil or what the fuck is going on with that, but like, I don't think she's meant to be human either. I could be fucking wrong. But the friend, without a doubt, is like, uh, you can literally just walk in that house and no one has to be around to understand that is get that kid out of there. Because that house never, like, that house gets trashed in the opening and then it never gets tidied. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's getting more trash. And I do have to laugh, but by the end of it, is that you can, the actors can't even walk through that house set because there's just shit everywhere. There's like, there's a moment, it was, it was when he beat her, is when he like physically struck her and she she's trying to leave as he does that. And then he like walks away to go brood you know, camera left or whatever. And then she goes into another room and then, like, you hear, like... And then she leaves that room and goes out the front door that's right next to it. I'm like... No fucking... Just on, like, a, a, a practical, you know, believability thing. No woman that has just been physically beat by their husband and is trying to remove themselves from that situation would not immediately walk out the door because they needed something else from the other room first. No director would would tell their actor to go through a, a second room first for anything. I legitimately think she just got confused about what the front door was and that she just like went off to another room of the apartment by accident and then they just kept that take for whatever fucking reason. Like, it just, it's just such like a weird confusing little moment and it's just I don't know fucking head scratcher man um there's there's so much shit like that where I'm just like it's a weird fucking choice and I don't get it like dude I have no fucking clue on any level I get that he's he's Established as unhinged. But why in the fuck does he kill the boyfriend once he visits the apartment and sees literal dead bodies? What the fuck was that about? I guess he's just into it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess he... I, I, the thing I kind of got from that at the very least is a kind of... Again, this is me stretching because I don't. I'm thinking of this literally on the moment as you're talking about it. So it's definitely not the film itself's credit. Is it kind of a oh, if I protect her, then maybe she'll stay with me. I guess I kind of got that impression too, but like. It was just so weird. It is so much where like. Dude, 
How good is this pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, this has to be some fucking Super Saiyan blue tier shit. Um, Gorilla <laughs> Uzaru Grip. <laughs> <laughs> to fucking, not only is he all in, like, to a, to this degree, but like, all, all these fucking dudes on. And then this fucking demon fetus fucking thing wants a, wants a taste. <laughs> wants to clap their cheeks too. <laughs> The poor guy wore himself out fucking her all night. Yeah, and you know? then she, she's fine. And he's like, oh, he's tired. <laughs> he's like, this is fucking. That scene would have been so funny. If this fucking, like, gargly, kind of sport tentacle monster is kind of like, oh, not to know. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking hentai that I want so badly. Right he's now. like, fuck it. He's like, oh, come on, you know you want it. He's like, no, like, this actually makes me feel really uncomfortable. And he's like, come on, you want it, you want me. He's like, no. Oh. Just like, it does like a fucking commentary on the hentai industry. He's like, what about the tentacle monsters, man? No one asked how they felt being in these fucking situations. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck am I gonna make the thumbnail for this video? I feel like I gotta throw in a fucking tentacle hentai thumbnail just to just to j get the fucking clicks, Alfie. And the views, uh, man. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. No. It's just it's so fucking weird. And again, like mixing horror and sex, I feel is is pretty good. Uh, Wes Craven at one point talked about this was like. Horror movies are very much like porn in that they're never going to get an award and they're they're kind of looked down on um, for actors to be in and, and as a society we, we don't really appreciate them. But there's an, there's an innate need for it that drives it and keeps it around. And that's something that has always interested me. Uh, and it's probably why they have a billion sequels apiece and often share the same actors. But I think there is something to the idea that, like, one of the only things, one of the only franchises, or, or genres, I guess, that you can get away with gratuitous sex scenes is a horror movie. And... To, you know, the cynical take is, oh, well, it's just an excuse for people to, to get their rocks off and, you know, you got the R rating anyway, so they're just, they're just throwing everything at the wall and, and hoping it keeps butts in seats. But then there's the, the underlying thing of like, well, what is scarier than something awful happening in that intimate moment? when you're at your literally most vulnerable in every conceivable way. Um, and so the idea of doing a, a movie where a fucking incubus is the, the monster is really fascinating to me. And the fact that it just, it doesn't, it doesn't really amount to much. Like it's introduced so late in the film um, cause it's at least an hour in until you get the first tease of it in that dark ass bathroom where you can barely see a goddamn thing. But like, it's introduced so late and ultimately it just doesn't feel like it has much of an effect on the, the goings on. Like, I feel, is it fair to say that if you cut the incubus scenes out of this, you could almost have the exact same movie? I almost would argue that's the intent. Like I feel yeah. like that's, I feel like there's probably readings of this, so it's just like that's not even meant to be real. Oh God, I hope not. That's dumb. That's even worse. <laughs> but that, that's the that's just, it's, it's that it's that kind of movie, though, isn't it? Right, where it is that kind of it's so kind of for lack of a better term cerebral or up its own ass depending how <laughs> nice you i'm feeling on that day <laughs> one or the other <laughs> um but like that it's that kind of thing but like how many of these scenes are meant to be taken as literal or how many of these things are meant to be thing and i think given we don't get any direct explanation and not like you need anything for a horror movie i think that's fine but the fact that you say it is so late in the game and it does stand out from the rest of this 
very passionate, but still quite, I guess, just... N there's nothing supernatural about the marriage breakdown and the, and the screaming gauge of a kind of... They're exaggerated, but that doesn't not necessarily mean that's not... You, you, that's not the supernatural element out here, it is that monster thing. And I feel like you could probably make the argument that that's meant to be like, oh, it's a symbolism for their guilt or kind of thing, which, why is she fucking dicking down the guilt? I wouldn't know, but, you know, who knows, man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's a weird one, because, like, she's got that... What does she say to him in that scene where you finally get, like, the full good look at the monster in the middle of action and stuff? It's like, I tried or something like that? She says, do you mean, like, during the sex scene or early on? During the sex scene, when well, he she walks says, in on She them. says, almost. Almost, that's it. And I think like, that, I almost got away or something. No, I think she means, like, she's gonna come. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's meant to be vague. I was just, like, I was trying to... I was just trying to give this movie way more credit than I feel it deserves. Um, yeah. And again, I just don't, like... Like, any time I see a movie like this and and I talk about hating it, like I do with fucking Eraserhead or or The Witch, people always throw me like, well, what about Kubrick? Kubrick did, you know, cerebral stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but Kubrick knew when to just show me a fucking room with some goddamn cobwebs in it and skeletons, you know? Like, shit. It's just... <laughs> and even Kubrick got up his own ass too much. Fucking Eyes Wide Shut sucks. Um, so, I mean, I'm not, like, attached to to the the Artur director, this, this kind of thing. Because, like, I just... I hate movies that do this. I hated this, this aspect of shit in fucking uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. And it just... These kind of things just hit the same for me, where it just scenes go on forever when they don't need to. Decisions are made that clearly don't have any any kind of oversight to them. Um, and just leave me just perplexed as shit. I'm just constantly perplexed by this one, by, by decisions like this. Right. Um, and I, I, I think you're speaking from more experience than I am. At least on my well, it's not even just like horror. It's just Archer films in general. I just don't like them. I I really dislike them, and I see them touted up. I think most in horror is what I'm I'm exposed to them the most because I do legitimately like horror films and I like when people try to do new things in horror. But there's just there becomes a limit like the. The conventions of storytelling on film, it's okay to stretch them, but I'm not okay with people trying to just break them, as I feel movies like this do. Um, like, there's a reason that they're, they're the conventions, and it's because they fucking work, you know? Uh-huh. I don't necessarily have the same view in to that sense, of just, like, the kind of, like, inherent dislike... But I do definitely think there is a question of just be, if you're going to break something, you need to be able to replace it with something better in its place. And that becomes mm -hmm. an inherent level of skill um, that I think people overrest themselves with sometimes. Like, I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with art or films or scenes that are specifically make you feel you uncomfortable or. Um, lack of oversight kind of thing I, I think all of those are dangerous and the reason these conventions exist are kind of like a safety net as a writer or a filmmaker which you can fall back on to at least have some grounding and removing that foundation immediately becomes a very precarious situation um, and I feel like the sign of like a really good filmmaker and, and when we do get grand interventions is you'll break a convention and then make something new and then that will become a convention because people will love it, and then and that's how you get these in the first place, kind of thing, right? Is if you do a groundbreaking, I think like Neil Gaiman talked about this, is if you do a completely new idea in 24 hours, that would be seen as old hat, 
because now everyone is doing that because you've just made mm-hmm. it you've added something very rare to the pool and that's a cool thing and it's obviously it's sad that you can't own your your new innovation ideas but that's also how like progress is made so i don't have a specific like dislike to these kind of things but i also just agree just on a pure fundamental level that this what it sets out to achieve isn't communicated as well as maybe it thinks it is and i i feel like there's you could make a better cut of this but even if you did i feel like there's just kind of a fundamental overshoot here where you could pull back a little and and be like twice as more effective with what you wanted to achieve yeah yeah no i agree with that um I was just scrolling through the IMDb and I knew I recognized the the main actor from stuff. It's playing the guy from Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it no, took me forever. I was trying to place like, him uh, the whole Jurassic Park's canon with this. That's the first of the clothing. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I don't recognize anyone else from the movie. Uh, what do you make of the fucking pink socks thing? I have no fucking idea what that's meant to do. Is like, it is it could be like a fucking is it a femininity comment? Is it is it a closeted homosexuality thing? Is it like I don't know where they're going with that? Why that's important? Well, it's just weird because it's like mentioned at the beginning of the movie, and it's such a specific detail that I'm like, okay, well this has to be important. Um, and then like right at the end of the movie, you see the guy's pink socks, and I'm like. What the fuck was that about? <laughs> yeah, I have I have no idea. I think it is just one of those things where like that's meant to tie in with the larger overall thing of what it's going to and, and it, like if it hits I'm like, oh my god, it all makes perfect sense. The socks here. Yeah, it was all totally like there's like those kind of things that you mention. And it just if if it's so it went over my head and I'm trying to pay with this film on its own merits, I'm like, okay, so this is talking about marriage and I, I feel pretty confident on the reading of the idea that they both make their idealized versions of themselves that then replace them i i think that's pretty solid but outside of that i'm, I'm reaching at straws yeah i don't i get that for her but i have no idea how he does that i don't like, think it's it... like intentional i think it's kind of meant to be one of those like subconscious kind of like like that the 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 idea to me kind of would be like the trope, right, of like the husband who cheats with the nanny or the other, the figure who is around the child in an almost mother role, which becomes like obviously like the school teacher and stuff. And so because she doesn't, she exists as that kind of like idealized mother and the idea of like the teacher or the, the nanny or what have you, he projects uh, onto it and the reason she's got creepy green eyes I have, with the contact specifically is I imagine is that is some kind of also demon possession because with how it ends we end it on her just staring and smiling at the camera as the thing's behind her so I don't know that's that's my thing I, 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 I think it is just one of those there is no explanation because they didn't make an explanation they just wanted to shoot it kind of thing I don't fucking know I don't know like this movie you know, it, it it feels like I'm not giving it enough credit because I don't know the answers to these things or, or I don't have answers and I'm just confused about these things that it goes out of its way to set up and, and deliver some kind of thing on. But I guess I don't have fucking time to think about those things and, and get to that level on those things because I'm spending so much time trying to understand your A plot. You know? Like, I'm spending so many resources trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in your A-plot with all this wasted time on screen that, like, the A-plot answer ends up being relatively simple, but I, I'm, I've been led to believe it's more complicated because of the amount of screen time that's been, that's been devoted to it. Um, I just really did not enjoy this. <laughs> Just... Yeah, and I, I'm disappointed as well, you know, because I, I, um, I, it got sold very well. It's just like the, the acting is very emotional. Like the, the, the true horror comes from the performances and seeing these people. Kind of, yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds interesting. And it's from someone who's had good recommendations before, kind of thing. So yeah, I, I was not 
going into it expecting what I that kind of thing, and I am, I am very disappointed kind of on that thing. Mm -hmm. So this is your fault, Super Eye Patch Wolf. We're coming for you. Go, uh, go, res <laughs> go, make a debunk of this video so Ian gets more subscribers, please. Not <laughs> <laughs> drama, with Super Eye Patch Wolf, please. We need. Those. Yeah, yeah, everyone go comment on his his video that Alfie watched that uh, he's a fucking liar and this movie sucks. Because the geeky gentleman told you so and you don't form your own opinions. Um, We'd already appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, is, this is why you're not as chadly as me. You don't have the balls to, like, insult your audience while asking them to do something for you. Like, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. I don't know, man. Like, at this point, I feel like I'm just being mean to the movie. I honestly don't have much, if anything, positive to say about this that we haven't already brought up. Um, do we want to just call this kind of like an early, an early end? I mean, it is only the two of us, so I think as a result, that leads to shorter episodes anyway, so... I, I'd be fine with that. I, I, I'm just on a positive note. I will say, because this is always a hard find, I think the child actor in this is very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I um, feel bad for the fucking kid. Right? <sighs> that scene where he came home and the kids just like alone and eating like jams and it's like how long has she been gone a long time and like that's really fucking sad <laughs> and the kids just that again i got given to the actors again it's just a very natural or perfect like kid response to the whole like, nothing bothers this kid during this whole movie but that's it's sad because that's exactly how kids that age are in dysfunctional abusive homes is they're just completely unfazed because they just assume except in like private moments just but like if if daddy comes home and just busted mum's fucking lip it'll still be like oh do you want to see my new toy because just that's just how the kids view the world and it's so sad mm-hmm mm -hmm. for sure all right well i think that's where we're gonna end this one uh let's go ahead and go under ratings um Give it a 0.5 out of 5, uh, fucking pumped dry sex demons. <laughs> oh no, for our boy sex demon, he, he didn't get, he didn't get once asked about how his day went, didn't once get asked if it was good for him. No, just, she just, just like came back to the apartment and was like, bed. Now he's he literally could have like... moved, so like I like, that's the fucking heart the horror story from the demon's perspective. <laughs> Is he's just born into this world and this fucking crazy bitch just starts fucking his tentacles. He's like, whoa, whoa, hey, I need to I, I rest, please, God out rest <laughs> So I feel like I feel like the fucking the Tap out, tap out, come quiet, come quiet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. now just like less legitimately the fucking sex demon that ends up with the nymphomaniac who's just too much for them is is my new favorite ship dynamic. <laughs> you discovered it. Yeah, no, that's the fucking like that is like. That is adult comic worthy, right there. CJ. Steven CJ could be yeah, proud. Very much so. Just like the hey, whoa, hold up. <laughs> just the insatiable, crazy bitch, and the like, just exhausted sex demon. That's my, that's my new thing. Copyright Ian Harrington, twenty twenty one. Well, there we have that. Um, for um, me, uh, I don't do the point system because I think you're all hacks who can't commit. Uh, so I'll give it a 1 out of 5, um, scenes I enjoyed. <laughs> Damn, you enjoyed 1 out of every 5 scenes. Pretty much how this movie went, yeah. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Alright, what are we going to talk about next time? Um, 
Well, I'm kind of watching through it now, so I may be a little hazy on it since it'll be a little bit, but uh, I, I'm enjoying it enough. I do want to talk about it. Let's talk about the newest Adams Family film, um, the CGI The Adams Family, because um, we started watching that last night. It's been pretty good so far. Uh, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Philosopher. And I am the champion. And we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things.